So I got a nice little story about the shop, a little bit of history of, of our past that I want to share with you. And this is kind of special to me. It's, it's always something that I have felt has been pretty special for our shop and my dad, you know, and um, our shop booth machine. So I've got some material right here that goes along with the story. I've got an envelope right here and a check stub in there that uh, we'll talk about, okay? And I've also got a newspaper clipping right here. And this will probably kind of uh, fill you in on what I might be getting at right here. So we've got a picture of a shark right there and some uh, big teeth. And it says the Jaws factory. And this newspaper was printed Wednesday, June 29th, 1977. So, a lot of you guys might know about a movie that came out in the uh, late 70s called Jaws. It was a Steven Spielberg movie. All right, uh, Jaws was filmed up in Martha's Vineyard, which is actually uh, Keith Fenner's back, uh, basically his backyard there, okay? Jaws 2 was filmed here along the Gulf Coast in my neck of the woods here, okay? Any, from what I researched uh, in the past, the, the movie was filmed from Pensacola Beach, Fort Pickens, I believe, all the way down east to Destin. So that includes uh, Pensacola Beach, Navarre Beach, Fort Walton Beach, and then Destin, and part of the Okaloosa Island out there, okay? There was a lot of different locations that it was filmed. And then you're talking back in the late 70s, it was a lot different then. There wasn't all of the condominiums out on the beach during that time. That, that was actually back when you had sand dunes and you could go out there and ride, uh, you know, rail buggies and dune buggies out there on the beach, which you can't do anymore. Okay, but anyway, so Jaws 2 was filmed here. And my dad actually had quite a bit to do with that movie as far as machining, welding, and fabricating, okay? So he had, a, he had a lot of parts that he had made uh, for the sharks themselves and the mechanics of the sharks. And I've got some pictures that I researched there and uh, thrown up in the video as we talk here so you guys can kind of see a little bit more inside of, the, of how the shark actually works. Um, I know it was attached to some kind of like um, submersible um, barge that allowed it to move and there's mechanics involved with that. And they also had several different sharks. It wasn't just one. They had several of them. And, and in this, this newspaper clipping, what this is, this was taken at a warehouse. They had, uh, the studio had rented out a warehouse down on Navy Boulevard, down there by Bio Chico. And uh, they had allowed my dad and my mom to go down there and tour it um, and, and see the sharks. And my mom says she don't know why she didn't take a camera because she used to take a lot of pictures, but she didn't take a camera that day to take pictures. And she wished that she did. And I, and I wish she did too. That would have been pretty cool. But we do have a newspaper clip in here highlighting that day or maybe that week, you know, that this come out in the paper. And what I've got here also is a, this is a check stub from some of the work that my dad did from Universal Studios. Okay. So the address I'm just covering this up because it does show my address on here. You know, I don't want to broadcast that everywhere. But uh, so the uh, the envelope ha also had another stamp right here for Irving Kramer, Holiday Inn, Navarre Beach, Gulf Breeze, Florida, 32561. And it says Jaws 2 right there. Whenever they had come here to do the filming for Jaws 2, they had just built or was just finishing that Holiday Inn out there on Navarre Beach. And I remember reading where the, uh, the studio actually rented out that entire building whenever they started doing the uh, filming. I believe what I read, or this might have been in a, a behind the scenes, is that they, I, don't think, I don't even think they ever opened it for the public yet before they rented it to do the, uh, the, the movie. The first part of the movie, there's a uh, scene there in the hotel. And then they actually used that hotel to house everybody for the filming while they were here. So uh, whenever you're watching Jaws 2, if you see the beach scenes, which is all in the movie, that's all out here in where I live. And it's just beautiful out there. So this, uh, this is a check stub, and it's the only one that my mom had saved. 
and it was for a pretty healthy amount, $2,217.28, okay? So, and it just says construction material, invoice 2330. That was a lot of money back in 1977, you know? But I remember dad telling me, you know, quite a few stories about the, um, the work that he did for the guys for the, for the movie. So he made some parts for the sharks and he also made, uh, he did a lot of repairs for the, the camera trucks. He says all the time that those guys in the, in the camera trucks would, they said they would just pull up down there and they, they'd have something broke on that truck. His words, he says, man, them guys were hell on them trucks. He said they'd always be breaking something. So he said they'd pull up down there and he'd have to do some welding and uh, fabricating, like make brackets and stuff and go out there and fix them trucks. Probably all kind of framework on those trucks to hold the people and the cameras is what I would imagine. And uh, as far as this goes, now this, let me move the uh, newspaper here so I don't mess it up. So this is some fiberglass tubing, okay? And it's, two, it's two different pieces from two, uh, it's basically two drops. And what he had used this for was he made some pneumatic cylinders for the sharks. And he used, that they, they went to uh, fiberglass because of the salty water down here in the Gulf. You know, the Gulf of Mexico is extremely salty and it's uh, very corrosive, okay? Uh, the first movie was up in Martha's Vineyard and apparently the water up there in the Northeast is not near as salty as the Gulf of Mexico. So when they brought the sharks and all the mechanisms down here to start doing filming, dad said that they were running into a lot of rusting issues out there. So the uh, maybe the cylinders that they had in there were carbon steel and they were rusting really bad and they were having problems. So that's what he had bought this for, was this fiberglass tube. It is smooth on the inside and I can see where you could use that to make a pneumatic cylinder. So, and these were the drops out of it. So that's why we always held on to that because the other pieces of this material was in those sharks that you see in the movie. <laughs> but I don't know the specifics on what it was. I, I know that it was a, there was a full pneumatic system on the entire shark assembly there that moved it in and out of the water. And I believe the, uh, the jaws themselves opening and closing, things like that. So, you know, that's pretty cool right there. I always think about them, them uh, sharks whenever I, whenever I see this material right here. But uh, the, other, the other interesting thing about the uh, movie I thought I'd uh, share with you, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably seen this and, and know and remember the movie. The, uh, the kids had got together onto their, on their sailboats and they went sailing and they said they were going to go out to... Um, no, they, they weren't sailing to, but what they ended up at was this place called Cable Junction. And that's where the shark actually gets killed at the end of the movie, uh, where it gets electrocuted. But that Cable Junction, what the, they make it look like an island out there in the water. But in fact, it wasn't an island, it was a barge. And all the rocks that you see around it, uh, Dad says that they were all styrofoam. And he made all the brackets that they needed to uh, bolt onto the barge and mount all those styrofoam rocks on. So that was, a, that was something else that he was a big part of right there. And always, always find that interesting. Every time I see the movie, you know, and I, I see Cable Junction, I think I'm like, yeah, that's just a barge floating out there in the water, man. That's not a real island. <laughs> but he, uh, he always, uh, he always told me about the stories, and I, and it's just been a part of this shop. And I've been looking forward to sharing that with you guys and, and put it in a video. And I felt that this was a fitting video to share this story with you guys. Okay, so. If you haven't seen the movie, I definitely recommend to check it out. If you haven't seen any of them, watch Jaws 1 and then watch Jaws 2. It's kind of based in the same area, um, you know, Martha's Vineyard. Um, I can't remember what it's, what it's actually called in the movie. Uh, I, it doesn't come to me right now, but yeah, the second one was filmed down here on the Gulf Coast, okay? So I got, there's, what we'll do is we'll open up this uh, newspaper clip and I'll, I'll give you a little bit closer look at it and we'll, we'll read a little bit of that article that shows in there, okay? All right, maybe that'll provide a little bit better picture for you right there. I want to be really careful with this. Uh, okay, so up here it says a toothless jaws awaits final touches. So they haven't finished putting the teeth in there or the jaws. That's another picture of the teeth themselves. 
and let's see that says um, shark battered boat prop uh, these articles go pretty heavy into the people that help create these things okay so I don't want to get too involved there but I'm just kind of pointing out the uh, the mechanics of, of all this right here so this this picture here this is part of the the underwater submarine type mechanism mechanism that the shark is hooked to this is one of the shells of the shark and it says a monster in the making shells will be joined to create to create a frame of mechanical shark all right and then there's a little bit of this article i wanted to read right here uh, just down the road from me and right there where i work actually is bio chico it says the mechanic the mechanical shark in jaws 2 is currently undergoing test at bio chico which is down there at navy boulevard i told you they had a uh, they rented a warehouse down on navy boulevard which is right there at bio chico shark is mounted on a submerged barge and controlled from another barge an, an electrical system controls the shark's pneumatic system which is powerful enough to build pressure of 7,000 cubic feet per meter inside the airtight mechanical monster. Release of the pressure drives the shark along the track on the barge, and an elaborate feedback system tells the technician at the control panel exactly what position the shark is in. All right, so that was the, uh, that was the best write-up that I could find on the shark itself the rest of it kind of goes into some of the other people there but I don't remember if there was anything else in here or not I, I think that was it yeah it, I think it was just the just the front page right here so that's it man that's what I wanted to share with you about the uh, the newspaper clipping and then this is a uh, we'll do a close-up here of the the uh, Universal Studios envelope and the Jaws 2 right there. So that's my little history story of the shop, guys, and I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you appreciate that. It'll always stay with me and, and I'm just always proud to know that we had a hand in the, uh, the, the movie Jaws 2. So again, if you haven't seen it, make sure you go check it out. It's a good movie. And uh, I guess now, every time you watch it, Maybe you'll think of Booth Machine Shop, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, so a lot of people want to see a new shop tour of the shop, so that's what this segment's going to be about right here. I'm going to grab the camera, and I'll take a walk through, and I'll, I'll try not to spend too much time in any particular area, but I know guys want to see the shop because you can't see it all in video at one time, so we'll probably just start at the front and work our way back. And there might be some areas that we that we kind of highlight. I'm thinking about maybe giving you a little peek into the list over there. We'll see some of the tooling that we have. And we might find some other stuff that I just share as we go. Okay, so uh, grab the camera and re reset. And let's do this. Okay, so this is standing in my entry door here, uh, looking into the shop. And so the front part is our welding area. And I've also got... A bench grinder that's where the carbide grinder is the uh, belt sander okay got my torch tanks up here mig welder and that's the big the big miller the 330 abp and of course the coke machine we showed that a long time ago in s and s that that's something that my granddad bought for our old shop and i believe that come from the union hall downtown if I remember correctly, it's made by Cavalier, or it's a it's a Cavalier brand Coke machine, old bottle machine, and it and it does work. It's actually you can hear it humming now. All right, so this is looking down the shop. The welding table here, and I've got a lot of tools up underneath there. It's not perfectly organized, but. It, it works for me now and I'm always trying to improve on all of my organization in this shop, but I've got a lot to do. So that's where most of my hammers stay in that little pile right there. And down here, I've got all kind of different pullers and strong backs and things like that. Uh, here's the box that Tom Lipton made when he sent me my four jaw chuck. 
The big vice people has asked me about that. It's a reed. Okay, and then the small one is a rock island. All right, that's where most of my grinders stay down there. I eventually want to get all those up on the wall and uh, make a you know a bracket for all those to hang in. There's the uh, the anvil, and we have a greener number three arbor press right here. And then this is a marble marble shear. And that works pretty good when you want to cut up some uh, sheet metal or some aluminum or brass stuff like that. It's pretty handy. I showed mounting that up in a video a while back. Uh, these are just some uh, basic hand tools right here. Nothing special. Just a hodgepodge of just basic hand tools. A few craftsman tools. All right. Nothing special there. And some of my my ear tools is, is this is another arbor press this is a famco number one all right and then i keep a bunch of punches and chisels and things like that right there and all those cans that spot here this is my uh you know like my shop desk and i cleaned it up here recently and i think this is where i'm going to set that grinder that surface grinder that i got the covell so I'm probably going to move this down here to this section right here and the Covell will sit right here and I can share this plug that the uh, K&T is hooked to. All right, so uh, that's my welding cabinet that's got all my welding rods and uh, welding materials inside there. A lot of these bottles on top, that's all for the spray welding that you've seen me do. That's diff the different types of powders. Of course, you got my radio. Uh, this is the lapping plate. I, I remember showing that here not too long ago whenever I was working on these uh, spacers for the arbors. You guys probably all know about the K&T by now. Still got a few things to do that I have not got to yet, but we, we do have a few projects left to uh, work on, such as hooking up the coolant system. I haven't done anything with that yet. And what else was I going to do? Oh, we're going to make the, uh, pretty soon here, we're going to be making the, the arm that goes into this hole that will hold the vertical head, okay? That's a big project that will be coming up into the new year, and I'm looking forward to that. All right, we got the list of there and some more tooling. That's where most of my 50 taper stuff's been going. I've got a cabinet down here that's got more of the uh, 50 taper. Okay, so there's some more tooling. There's some big drills and some of the 50 taper stuff in there. Just a in just a mix of different things are in there, and we'll uh, bunch of micrometers, some of the bigger ones, and there's some depth mics down there. And we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll check this out. These are the collets for my collet chuck for the lathe. Those are my 5C collets there. And then my wall full of tap wrenches. <laughs> so in case you guys are watching and you haven't been following along all this time, this is my Greenfield number 24 tap wrench. And I'm pretty sure that's the biggest size they ever did make. And they're very hard to find. That one's a number 22. That's the next size down there. There's a pretty good assortment of my tap wrenches there. And I got many more. All right. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's regroup here. And we'll come back to about here. Okay. So there's looking down my workbench. And usually you see me right about there where the computer is. You know, I got my... Uh, Hollywood light set up up there to give me a little bit of backlighting and this is something that I'm not really proud of is this is always like a mess down here but I I just I don't have anywhere to put things and it just kind of gets disorganized and every now and then I get down there and I'll clean a section out but all these boxes here are reamers and then that's some more of my uteloid powder there but uh, these are all reamers uh, taper shank hand reamers uh, of all kinds okay those all come from my old shop 
and I've got a whole box full of C clamps there. Just a, just a whole mix of all kind of different shop tools. All right. Uh, a lot of my materials are right there that I use. And then these two boxes right here are full of the cutters for the horizontal mill or horizontal milling cutters. Okay. And then I've got just a couple boxes just full of random stuff that I, I can't remember what all's in them boxes. All right. So we got, I got a bunch of toolboxes. This was uh, Paul's toolbox. I got a video on that. And these other ones come from my shop. Kind of give you a peek just real quick. All right, see, there's my uh, hex dies. There's a drawer full of hex dies. And then we got another drawer full of round dies, die stocks, okay? There's some more taps. And I think this one is a mix of different things. Oh yeah, we got tool bits, tool bits. These are the taps that uh, Jimmy had given me from Greece. Got an Acme tap there. Just all kind of random, random tools in there. Okay, and same thing with this toolbox. There's a lot of random tools in there. Carbide. I got a bunch of carbide in there. All right. A little cast iron surface plate, and you see, I got some of the stuff that people have have made for me the uh, model of the rotary table, the uh, copy of the Eagle Oiler, and then the clock that was uh, made in, in memory of my dad. And of course, there's a picture of my dad and granddad. And uh, this box here has got a lot of my mics that I use, different, uh, different daily tools that I use, okay? There's a bunch of different smaller mics there telescope gauges all right there's I don't want to get too involved in all the toolboxes all right a lot of my mics that I use on the regular is right here this is that uh, uh, Mitsutoya box but it's got one two and three brown and sharp slant line mics which I really like okay all of the boxes are just full of random tools but there's certain things that I use out of each box that I know where to go okay like Right here, I have my edge finders here, and then I have scribes and things like that. All right, but there's all kind of stuff in these in these toolboxes. Drills, sets of uh, indicators here, more drills. Uh, these are some of the drills that were given to me. The metric sets are right there. <clears throat> this is a very old handmade uh, toolbox right here that was given to my dad by brother marlo years and years ago he was a preacher uh, down at the church here down the street but he was also a machinist and he had given this to my dad way back in the day i want to say probably the 70s and dad had ended up giving it to me and back when i was a teenager i took it home and i painted it and i actually had refinished this but that was so long ago but i used to keep all of our drills there and i, I mean i don't know what all's in here now really I don't, I don't go to this box very much, but it does mean a lot. Um, this was Brother Marlowe's card. Let's see. Yeah, okay, Henry Marlowe, Northside Baptist Church. And it's got his other info in here too, his journeyman, the stamps. and So there's all kind of tools there. There's another picture of my granddad, and you, you may or may not have seen that picture yet. I've got a good slideshow for you guys, so we'll get to the pictures, okay? Uh, my balancing roller is right here. Okay, uh, so we got our granite table, recently bought at an auction uh, for 100 bucks. so, you know, nice usable table here. I got lots of shop tooling in this cabinet right here. It's just slap full of things. Um, I keep most of my Nogas right there and my multi-fix tooling for the for both the lays. Usually, usually go about right there. And then that was my uh, dad's toolbox right here. And it's, I mean, it's full of tools also. Let me see. I showed you guys one of these drawers before, and I want to say it was this drawer with the uh, all the spring calipers. And this drawer here, it's hard to do it one-handed. There's some reamers. So I go to, go to this drawer whenever I'm looking for the smaller hand reamers or chucking reamers. 
And then in this bottom drawer has got a bunch of um, counter bore tools in there. And then there's a, see we got a couple more taper reamers in here also. And there's some brass bushings in there. All of my expanding mandrels and other jigs and fixtures go down there. That's some of the expanding mandrels. There's a few standing up there. I was looking for some and I pulled those out. All right, so uh, we got a good series on this guy. That's my rotary welding table that I built. Uh, started about a year ago. Okay, so for you guys that are watching that haven't seen that, that'd be a good series for you to watch. If you're looking for some good videos, I show how I built that thing uh, complete from uh, the idea in my head to the finished product. And just to refresh you, I started with this. It was based around this faceplate that come from my old shop. I don't know what machine it came off of, but I believe it to be a faceplate off a very old lathe. that has got the four inch threads here in the middle. And it was something that my granddad uh, bought and it was never used for anything. And it just made a perfect welding table. So I give it new life instead of scrapping it, okay? And some of the other materials was from around my shop also. So check this series out if you haven't seen it yet. On to the machines. There's our uh, Victor lathe. That's a 1660. And I believe this was built somewhere around the late 70s, maybe even early 80s. I don't know for sure. But it was around that time. And it's a, it's a good lathe, industrial quality. It's made in Taiwan. And it's just a good, good cutting lathe. I like it. Over here on this side, we've got the Dewall mill and all of the tooling and stuff that goes with the milling machines. Just all kind of different things, you know, the tooling. I showed this before. This is something I made to a stand that uh, holds different tools. I can swivel these shelves. So I got the super spacer there. This is our big. Um, rotary table here I got it covered up with a rag I think that's a 12 inch and this is something recent that I bought whenever I got the big Kurt vise another vise down there in the in the floor that this actually used to be the vise that I used on the uh, on the wall. a good selection of cutters that's uh, pretty well organized I did this whenever I moved into this shop you know, small end mills all the way up to inch and a half. And I've got everything kind of segregated like it should be, uh, like roughing end mills, ball end mills, T-slot cutters, woodruff cutters, left-handed taps, metric taps, you know, just uh, pretty much the stuff that you use on the regular, you know, and then tool bits, they're, they're in individual bins. Lots of drill bits, just a mix and match of drill bits more milling cutters okay and of course you know what these are as all your milling clamps you got some more stuff there for the mill uh, collets and drill chucks things like that there's the um, Kemp Smith dividing head I took that with me to uh, Keith Rucker's and we use that on one of the parts for the uh, the table saw restoration This is the 12-inch Sheldon Shaper. I've got a couple videos on this, but nothing, nothing fancy. We haven't done any major work on it yet. Just basically made some chips with it. And I would like to make some better videos in the future on uh, doing some jobs on this machine. So uh, look, for, look for some Shaper videos on my channel. We got them out there. All right, and then we're getting to the Monarch. Now, this is... Uh, 16 cy is the model okay it'll swing it'll swing about 18 inches but it's a 16 and i've got also a good video on this if you want to go back called the monarch revival I, I give a pretty good rundown of history on that but this is a lathe that my granddad bought from a shop in mobile i don't know what year but this was a long time ago and i think uh, dad said that he had paid 2500 dollars for it way back when and it's been a good machine. It's been an uh, excellent machine for my shop here. And we've done a lot of work on there. And I know people like to see it. But it is an excellent machine.
I really enjoy having this. Okay, back here we got our, that's our uh, Trenco blast cabinet. Both of those units are the blast cabinet. That's the, that's the vacuum unit over there, and this is the actual blast cabinet, okay? And it, it is a little bit big for my shop, but it's what I had, and I wanted to keep it, so that's why it's here. Uh, this was Granddad's toolbox. I showed that a while back, uh, just full of all kind of different tools. And this is the Gerstner that I bought, I think it was last year maybe we got that. And I've been filling it up with some tools. There's some more tooling there, all of like your Armstrong type tool holders. I got a bunch of rocker tool posts. And then this cabinet here is what I've been working on for some time. Uh, it's, it's pretty much getting filled up, but I, a lot of the stuff that people give me that I don't really have room for elsewhere, I've been putting it back here. Okay, I've got some bins here full of different things, different tools that I just haven't got to yet and find places for it. So I'm trying to keep it organized here. Uh, this is a bin full of plastics though. There's a lot of different UHMW, nylon, phenolic, and uh, plastics. This is some recent stuff that I come into not long ago that somebody had. Actually, it was Will. He had a bunch of that cut up and I just took some in case we could use it for something. I got all my extra grinding wheels in that, in that tub right there. And that shelf holds all my extra Morse taper tooling, such as drill chucks, live centers, and what have you. Uh, geometric die head, I got the floating chuck there. Okay. And I think that's going to be about it. I got another toolbox here that I work out of. This is what I always considered my toolbox because we had bought this from a retired machinist not long after I started working. Uh, me and dad had went and looked at it and it was full of tools including that box of mics that I showed you over there the Michitoya box that came with it and he had all kind of other uh, Michitoya uh, tools in this and I've worked out of this box for a long time there's all the different square butts and uh, rules and scales Let's see, there's one of my tool bit drawers I've worked out of for years and years. I'd, all my little precious tool bits that I didn't want to get lost, I'd come over here and I'd put it in that drawer right there. Okay, there's some more scales. But <clears throat> that's, uh, I just always consider that my toolbox, even though Dad, Dad bought it for me. I want to say we paid like four or five hundred dollars for, for it way back in the late 90s. I can't really remember now. This this is an old box that come from my shop too. Um, these are some recent purchases right here, some Starrett, but okay. So here's another tap drawer with tap handles, tap you know T handles. We got some more taps right there, and then I, this drawer here it's going to be hard to open. It's full of used end mills. It's it's really heavy, so I don't want to try to open that. Okay. There's the four jaw king uh, crown that Tom Lipton had, had made for me that uh, he gave me back at the uh, Barzy Bash back in April. We uh, got some good footage of that, so uh, check that out. And the uh, the damn I'm good mirror was given to me by my grandma a long time ago, and I've always held on to it, and I always laugh every time I see it. It was just her sense of humor. Okay. Oh, there's our uh, uh, Queen City. 12 inch pedestal grinder and another upcoming video hopefully in the near future is going to be machining this shaft right here okay it's going to look about like this one you have your square thread in the end and it's uh, it's recessed down there for a thrust bearing to set so I, I want to pull this out and get that finished one of these days so that'll be a good video to put on the channel I think that's going to be about all the inside. Let's uh, let's take a stroll outside. I'll give you a quick peek out there, okay? Uh, it is starting to get a little dark, but uh, so this is my recent awning that I had built on back in the very early summer. I believe it was April or May that we did that, and I do have future plans to enclose this. I just have not made it that far yet, but we want to enclose that, 
and be another door here and it'd be fully electrical or you know run with electrical with lights and receptacles in here and be able to hook up some machines I do have a few things out here too of course this is the grinder that we recently got I got my powermatic drill press the dake uh, hand press and then we have some uh, drill presses back here also and the um, Ingersoll ran air compressor and then I've got a metal rack here full of different materials alright so I got a lot of people that want to know what I have in the list so let's go ahead and check it out the uh, the top drawer is mainly just hand tools it's another hodgepodge of hand tools, okay, of all, all types. I know it's not well organized, but this is what I got for now. So they all go here, <laughs> okay? All right, second drawer, there you go. There's some red stair at boxes. And this box back here, that's the one that I would like to get out. I just, I, I'm gonna have to take all these out so I can get to it because the drawer's hitting dad's toolbox right there. But I'd like to show you what's in that box there. We have all kind of different indicators, levels, gauges, calipers, okay? More machinist tools, more stare at boxes, more indicators. Okay, moving down. All right, another drawer full of mics and machinist tooling okay so uh, some of these are donated tools and then some of them are are my tools some of them I've, I've traded off but uh, right here we got a very nice steer at mic set this is a 12 to 16 and then underneath this there's a bigger Michitoya box okay those are 12 to 18 interchangeable anvil mics all right <clears throat> just all kind of goodies mixed in there we've got some different uh, depth mics these are the calipers that i recently got some more veneer calipers so that's the uh, that's about the list of for you right there one more drawer full of uh tools you know, I'm, some of my uh Stared indicators are flowed over to here. I've got a couple wooden boxes back there. Those are full of reamers, uh, like sets of reamers. These were dads, and they're really good sets. One is a Keystone set, I believe. And then some of my other stuff that I've been collecting and uh, some of the stuff that's been given to me, it's just been going in this drawer right here, okay? Different hand tools and, and, and whatnot. So I think that's about it. Oh, we got one more drawer. This is the heavy one. There's the taper shank drill collection. And I've got them uh, set up as, uh, you know, 64, 30 seconds. And then you come over here, these are like your fractional sizes, uh, like eighths and sixteenths, halves and quarters. And then these are all your um, mm, core drills, I believe they're called, uh, like three fluted. Got a bunch of those right here, a bunch of some big ones there's a big one there so we've got a bunch of those so there's the drill selection all right well i really hope that you enjoyed this 100th episode of sns uh, I, I worked really hard to try to make it enjoyable for you to watch and and really share a little bit more history about our shop uh, it's what a lot of guys have asked for. They wanted a little. They wanted to know a little bit more about me and my dad and my granddad, and a little bit about the stories of our shop here. So that's really what I was trying to share, was uh, the shop itself there. So uh, I might have a few uh, bloopers and outtakes here at the end that I can uh, throw in there for you. There's not a whole lot of them, but I got a few, and you might you might get a laugh or two out of out of some of those. But uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to everybody everybody out there that has given their support to me in this YouTube channel all of the friends that I've made uh, 
I, I've made so many friends these uh, past two and a half years just because of these YouTube videos, man. Somebody, somebody, so many people have just been so generous with all of these uh, gifts and tools and things that people send me, man. I just, it's, uh, it's really hard to uh, show my gratitude all the time about all the things that people do for me and they send me. But I do appreciate every single thing that, that, is, uh, that is given to me. And I do try to uh, make use of it around here in the shop. But uh, I do really, really appreciate all the support from all you guys. I love hearing from you, your feedback, your comments, um, especially whenever you give me the thumbs up on the videos. It lets me know what you like and what you dislike, you know. So hopefully we're going to keep this going. I've got a lot of videos planned for 2016. We've got some uh, projects coming up. So we'll, we'll be starting on those very soon. And I want to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, Happy New Year. Okay? Thank you for tuning in to SNS 100. And I really hope you enjoyed it, okay? Found a good job to do this Sunday afternoon. I got my beer can crusher mounted to my workbench here. Bolted on there nice and rigid, got four lag bolts. Put it to the test. I think that'll work. All right, getting ready to tap and uh, gonna use the anchor lube. And somebody says that I over, over lube this, so let's really Let's really up the ante and, and over lube that thing since, uh, since I'm over lubing the taps here. All right, that should work good there. Maybe not. My other, my next size down tap wrench is just a little bit too small for the tap to go in. Let me see if I can find another one that I can make go on there. And uh, hopefully everybody will uh, will have them a nice A-bomb shirt for a while. And uh, hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name is Adam. This is going to be SNS episode 71. I've got a lot of I've got a lot of So we're going to do another test on the pump here. And we're going to test the pressure relief valve to see if we're getting to the proper operating temperature. Okay, just a just a quick simple machining op. We're going to chuck it part it off and then we'll just run a uh, half inch drill up in there about halfway or so so I had to go look through my stash of hardened collets and wouldn't you know I have a 13 16 hex collet alright come on what you doing There was a chip on there. All right, come on, man. We got it. We need you to work.
So we've been working on the 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 uh, well I decided to take the take the knife and then I'm gonna counter board to fit the bearing, okay? Or the bearing race should I say. So I'll give you some shots of the boring action, okay? The boring action. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get these soft jaws finished up first. So we're at four and a quarter, so we've got to mill three eighths off of it. All right, so I'm just going to clean one side up and then I'll set up a, uh, the multi axis stop over here and mill the other side and then we'll go in there and drill and countersink. High gear is what I need. Well, you know what would help? You know what would help? Tighten the collet up. <laughs> I got busy there doing something else and I come back and I, I thought I had tightened it up, but I guess I didn't. So, all right, that's okay. 